Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, Three Brilliant Strategies to Drive Traffic to Your Showroom. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. For anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented sixth, oh, wait a second, nope, seventh year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites three times. Plus, this past year, both FCA and Ford announced that we're now approved vendors. Big things are happening over here at DealerOn. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Do you want to know more? Yeah, you do. You can check us out at DealerOn.com. And hey, are you losing valuable traffic because of a slow mobile site? It's estimated that well over half your website traffic is coming from mobile devices. But don't you worry, because DealerOn now offers a mobile site speed test for free. You can get yours after the webinar. Just give us your URL and let the magic begin. It's a great way to see how your site stacks up to the competition. And DealerOn will be exhibiting and presenting at the upcoming NADA convention in Vegas at the end of March. If you're going to be there, well, shoot, I'm going to be there. So stop by booth 3493 Charlie. We have the best booth around, and we're not just bringing the best digital marketing tools and some free booze to NADA this year. We're also bringing some serious knowledge. Our very own Greg Gifford will have two sessions on the Lego Masters Builder's Guide to Local SEO for Car Dealers. Figure out what's holding your dealership back from showing up in Google searches in your area. And we also have Mike DeVito, our Chief Creative Officer, who's going to talk about selling more cars with your mobile website strategy in Pave the Path to Purchase, Turn Website Traffic into Sales. I can't wait to see you there. Remember, it's booth 3493 Charlie, and get a demo from us and get $100. Lots of stuff there. Remember, check me out at booth 3493 Charlie. We have a great show in store for you today. We are very pleased to have first-time Dealer on webinar presenter, Laura Madison, today. Laura Madison is the Vice President of Sales and Training at Allen Rams Proactive Training Solutions, a leading automotive industry training company. As a former top car salesperson, Laura Toyota, best known for her use of social media within the automotive industry, Laura now works with some of the premier dealer groups in the U.S. and Canada to convert more traffic to the showroom. She's been featured in Automotive News, Advertising Age, and Edmunds.com for her unique marketing and self-promotion strategies. Laura is also the creator of the renowned Social Selling Course and hosts the popular Management by Fire training event. Laura is an active and respected member of the automotive community, and she can be reached at laura at allenram.com. By the way, you can catch Laura Madison at two upcoming events. She's going to be presenting at the upcoming Innovative Dealer Summit April 3rd to the 4th and Digital Dealer Convention in Orlando April 10th to the 12th. Let me tell you people, if you think she's great on the webinar, wait till you see her in person. You can check out the links on the slide for more info or to buy tickets. You're definitely not going to want to miss Laura Madison live. She is amazing. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. And don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Allen Rams Proactive Solutions, they're giving away two cool prizes on today's webinar. First, one lucky attendee is going to win 90 days of free access to Allen Rams seemingly endless online training library. It's a great prize for your dealership. It's valued at $695. Next, one lucky attendee is going to win a seat to an upcoming Management by Fire event. There are different dates in different locations throughout the country. So you know what? Pick any one date that's convenient for you. This is a fabulous prize valued at $2,195. Wow. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though. So stay tuned for your chance to score an awesome prize today. 
Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey, so fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience, and we want to hear what you have to say about today's presentation. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's show. So please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Laura Madison at Laura Drives. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's check out three brilliant strategies to drive traffic to your showroom. Laura Madison, how are you? I am doing fabulous. How are you? I'm doing great. And just so everyone knows, full disclosure, I got to meet Laura Madison for the very first time at the most recent Women in Automotive event where she was on stage, on center stage and she gave a spectacular presentation. And I knew right there I needed to have her on the show. So I have seen her in person, you know, present. So definitely try and catch her live at one of those upcoming events. But I'm so glad you're here with us today, Laura. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for having me, and thank you to everybody who joined us. Now, just also so you know, anyone who has been on my show before, I told you, Laura Madison, first time dealer on webinar presenter. So what does that mean? That means you hit her with the toughest questions you got. Okay, Laura, where do we go from here? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is, you know, webinar by fire, kind of. Okay, <laughs> yeah, tell everyone the kinds of things we're going to be learning about today, and let's get to it. Absolutely. So we're going to be learning a lot of tangible strategies to drive more business to the showroom. And this is going to be applicable to dealers, managers, and any salespeople that we also have on the broadcast. So some of the things we'll be talking about are creating a proactive culture. So for dealers and for managers, how you can encourage this and shift the culture at the dealership will really define that. And for salespeople, we'll talk about what specific activity you can be engaged in that is proactive, that makes things happen, rather than waiting for things to happen. Next, we'll talk about social media. A lot of people who know my story, my history, know that this is an area that I feel very strongly about. So we're going to get into some specifics about how to use it the right way. Next, we're going to be looking at how to really maximize inbound opportunities once and for all. This seems to be the unicorn, especially in the training world of the automotive industry. So we are going to unpack that. And I really encourage you to stick around because you do have to be a part of the live broadcast in order to qualify for our two fantastic giveaways. I am so excited for that. And I also will tell you guys now, and I will remind you throughout the broadcast, that I love questions. So please, ask questions, take advantage of the question and answer session. I absolutely love that portion of the Dealer On webinar. So I'm really looking forward to that. So think on it, noodle it, and I'll look forward to answering those at the end of the broadcast. Sounds good. Let's go. Fantastic. So I think what's really important to do is to begin by framing this up. Everything that we're going to be talking about today has to do with conversion of opportunities. So how are you converting from the telephone, from the internet, to the showroom? My feeling is that this business is now all about conversion. It's all a big conversion game. We know that customers are visiting less dealerships in person than they ever have. I think Google for 2017 said 1.2 dealerships on average. Your customers, who the ones who buy, are averaging 1.2 dealerships before they make that purchasing decision, and that tells us that this business is all about conversion. It's all about your ability to bring people into your showroom and, and your team's ability to bring people into your showroom. You could have a staff full of walk-around champions. You guys could be the best closers in your state, but today's reality is that unless you're getting customers in the door, you're out of luck. And so what we're going to be talking about today is, again, I think one of the most relevant things in today's industry, in 2018, it's how to drive that business, it's how to convert, and my opinion, again, is it's the lifeblood of the modern dealership. So let's start by taking a quick look at understanding this shift, understanding customers visiting less dealerships in person, what we still tend to do as an industry, and here it is. We still step tend to stand around out front and wait for the customer. Wait, it's like standing out front of Blockbuster and just hoping it'll reopen. It doesn't make as much sense in 2018. I don't think it made sense in 1982. 
but it definitely doesn't make sense today based on our customers doing all of their shopping, all of their research online, and back to the, to the phones with click to call on mobile. Now, salespeople tend to stand around out front and wait for those customers. When we've got five salespeople standing around for three hours waiting for one customer, that just doesn't make sense. So we're going to talk about better uses to manage that activity and manage your time and be proactive and make things happen rather than waiting for things to happen. Now, managers are not faultless in this system because many managers today will be focused, laser focused on the showroom. They're thinking about who's with that guy over there, has anybody told Jenny her customer is here? And they're laser focused on this limited opportunity, of this limited pool of opportunities. They're laser focused on the people who are in front of us. And again, 10 years ago, when the average customer visited four, five, even six dealerships in person before they bought a car, maybe this made more sense. But in today's business, what we are going to be focusing on today at this webinar and what you should be focusing on really to dominate is everything that's happening outside the showroom that needs to be brought in. Everything that's happening behind us, internet leads that haven't been followed up on properly, phone ups that have not yet shown up at your dealership, car buyers who are using social media during the research process to determine what car they'll purchase and where they'll purchase that car. All of the things that are happening outside that need to be brought in. And that's really what we're going to focus on. We're going to try and really determine, again, a proactive culture and how we can make things happen rather than just waiting for them to happen. Now, there's a lot of talk in our business about BDCs, but I want to be crystal clear. What we're going to be focusing on today specifically is creating a culture of business development. Not a BDC, it's not meant to be confused with BDC, it's a CBD. It's a culture of business development. How do you managers, you dealers, get your team driving traffic, making it happen, creating that culture? And how do you use salespeople really take that action and leverage all of the opportunities that you have to get more bodies sitting in the seat in front of you in the showroom? So a culture of business development is what you want to focus on. And the first thing that we have to really think about when we think about a culture of business development and start to put this together is our ABCs. This is where we're going to start. Now, many of you remember years ago in the classic movie Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Alec Baldwin taught us that ABC meant always be closing. Always be closing on the demo drive, on the presentation, always be closing. Here's the reality of today's automotive industry. The new ABCs, the things that are most critical to your success, is not necessarily some of the things that we focused on. Again, some of the walk around competition, some of the closing techniques. It's really what we're doing when we're not with customers to help us get customers. It's activities between customers. Again, what are we doing when we're not with customers to help us get customers? That's what's critical. You know, as an industry, and, and as a dealership, all of our deficiencies are masked when we have people just rolling in all day long, when we have people coming in the front door, when we have calls coming in, all of our deficiencies are masked because we've got people who can desk deals, who can close deals, but we don't necessarily have people who really are managing, managing their people, managing activity, and really making sure that they are doing the most productive thing that they could be at any one time to drive business. So today's ABC is activity be activities between customers. Again, what are you doing when you're not with a customer to help you get a customer? And you managers, if you see your salespeople not doing the most productive thing that they could be doing to drive traffic, what we're going to be talking about today is how do you help them get to be doing the most productive thing they could be to drive traffic. So we're going to turn this standing around out front because there is no study that has ever shown a correlation of more salespeople standing around out front to us selling more cars. How many man hours are wasting here, right, Liana? No one's right? done that study? No one has done that study, and I don't anticipate it. Anytime soon. So we are going to be turning this into this. 
We're going to talk about you managers, you dealers, how can you get your people, again, doing the most productive thing? And all of the salespeople that are here on the webinar with us, we're really going to give you the action items to turn this into a, into a business development culture. And in order to really do this, I want to show you all a quick video of what it looks like. Now, some of you may have seen this, but it is my all-time favorite. It's a, it's a quickie, and I just want to tell you what you're about to see here before I flip it. So this video was filmed by our founder, by Alan Ram, and this was uh, last summer, a year ago last summer, and he went into, he was doing a meeting at a client of ours in California, and they said, hey, go check out our new business development center. Now, this is a business development center that is staffed by salespeople. They go in and they rotate through this business development center, and that's where they make things happen rather than this standing around, they're making it happen. So what you all will be seeing as I flip to this quick video, so you'll be seeing Alan walking through the front door. The very first person that you all will be seeing in this video is a gentleman by the name of Chris. I feel very fortunate to know him. He is a stone cold rock star. And so you have the picture. Chris's experience is really that he could be a GSM at any dealership. He's knowledgeable, he manages, but instead of focusing on the showroom and that limited pool of opportunities, Chris is focused on everything that's outside of the showroom that needs to be brought in. He's working with his people. They're doing training in this, in this area. He's, if, if there's an intervention, if a, if a customer needs to be called, Chris is the one who gets on the phone and does that. So what I'm wanting you to feel during this quick video as you see this, as you see Alan walk in, is the energy in this room rather than the energy that you would imagine here, really the energy that you can feel when they're making it happen rather than just waiting for it to happen. So let's take a look. All right, let's check out the new future Ford and Nissan Business Development Center. There is the captain, Chris Nambiar. That's how we do it. <laughs> and look at this. Salespeople everywhere on the phones. Oh, look at that book. What's that book? I love that book. Perfect. Thank you. Look at that. Nothing but salespeople on the phones making it happen. So you can feel the energy there. That's powerful. That's them using their time between customers rather than standing around in a huddle talking about the outcome of the Super Bowl and talking about whatever Donald Trump is doing. They are on the phones and they are participating in the success of this dealership. Now, one freebie that I want to give specifically to you dealers and managers who have joined us that I want you keeping in mind as we go through some of these really tangible strategies to drive traffic is about putting your money where your mouth is. I have a lot of people, and this is a really popular topic at our Management by Fire event, so I wanted to include it in here and, again, get you thinking about this as we start to go through some of these strategies. You want a pay plan that encourages generating additional traffic while at the same time reinforcing the culture you want to see. Now, the reason, again, I want to include this, and I think it has such a strong message, especially at our Management by Fire events, is because I have people ask, well, I want my people on the phones, but how do I really make that happen? You know, I ask them to get on the phones, but how do I make that happen? And what I want you evaluating is not how you can spend more money in your budget, but looking at your SPIF plan and asking yourself, with every SPIF that you have available, is this helping you sell one more car? And so some of the things that we talk about that I don't think I have quite enough time to really get into today, but some of the things we talk about is your, your salesperson of the month spiff, for example. If that's a spiff that you have which is only based on units and not based on where those units are coming from, that's probably not helping you sell one more car. That may be just hugely benefiting your lot lizard who is burning through your ups. So when you look at some of these strategies that we're about to get into, I want you thinking, how can I support this culturally? And to give you an example, one of the ways that we see people do this to be extremely effective is using a referral at, as referral spiff for the salespeople. And let me explain. We have a referral sheet at time of delivery, and damn, I should have included it in the, uh, the attachments here, but please, anybody, they're welcome to reach out to me directly, and I can get you that referral sheet. But that referral sheet is a trackable way that at the time of delivery, we can ask for a referral from the customer who just bought a car from us. 
It's a powerful way. We know that referrals close at a higher percentage and often higher grosses. So we want to be asking for referrals in the right way at the right time. And this referral sheet is an amazing way, a process that management can use to really track this and make sure that it happens, make sure that we're maximizing on this. So when you have this referral sheet in a trackable way, and you have, uh, you sold Eliana a car, and she's referred a girlfriend of hers, and that girlfriend a couple months later comes in and buys a car, to me, that's worth a spiff. That's worth a spiff to the salesperson because they are generating you business that might not have come in otherwise. You can determine how much it's worth to you, but doing something like this, and I want you thinking about this and your SPIF program as we go through some of these strategies, I'll tell you it is a powerful way to impact the culture at the dealership. Now, it's got to be trackable. Don't get me wrong, because if you just start saying that you'll pay and you'll SPIF for referrals, you'll never get another fresh up at the store. It needs to be trackable, and so that's why I love that sheet. I'm happy to send it out to whoever would like it, but I want you thinking, you managers, this is your freebie. I want you thinking about how can I put my money where my mouth is and support this and create the culture that I'd like to see. So Eliana, I'd like to pull the audience. Let's do it. All right, audience, we have three great poll questions on uh, this show today. The first one of those poll questions is on the screen now. Now there's a lot of you out there, so I'm hoping that as many of you as possible will answer this poll question for us. We want to know how long have you, you personally, been employed at your current dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Is it, I just started within the last six months, you've been at your dealership three years or less, you've been at your dealership ten years or less, or you know what? I'm a lifer, I've been here more than a decade, I'm not going anywhere, or you know what, I've been here so long, I can't remember, I'm probably going to die here. All right, so once we get a majority of the votes, then we're going to close this poll and share the results. We want to know, are you a newbie? Are you somewhat kind of new? Are you still finding your way? Are you a lifer? Or are you planning your retirement? All right, once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And yes, like I said, we have two more poll questions coming at you a little bit later. So as these votes are coming in, wow, very interesting voting coming in. Um, just keep in mind, we are looking for... Uh, this many or even more on the next two poll questions that will be hitting you later on in just a few minutes. All right. Wow. Great votes. Audience, thank you so much for, for participating in this poll question. Laura, if you're ready, I'll close this poll and we'll see what the audience had to say. I'm ready. I'm excited to see who we have here. All right. <laughs> well, you know what? It kind of runs the gamut. Here we go. How long have you been employed at your current dealership? 20% of today's audience say they just started within the last six months. Wow. The majority, however, 38% of today's audience say they've been with their dealership three years or less. 26% of today's audience, so about a quarter, says 10 years or less. 13% of today's audience, well, they're calling themselves a lifer. They've been at the dealership more than a decade. And 4%, yeah, they're going to die there. <laughs> They've been there way more than a decade, and uh, this is very interesting results. Now, how does this help you, Laura? How, how, why did we ask this question? We are about to get into one of the strategies that I'm most excited to share today that I know everybody, whether they're as green as green can be or whether they're a lifer and a veteran and have been at the dealership for more than a decade, can really jump into. So we're going to lay out, but I wanted to know what our spread was, and I love seeing this variance. Again, we're going to give everybody a little something, and for my example that I'm about to use, I am going to pick a little bit of an average from what we're just seeing. So the first real tangible strategy that I wanted to share about, brilliant strategy that I wanted to share about driving traffic to your showroom, I call Operation Customer Base. Now listen, this is a disclaimer. The things that have the biggest impact in the automotive industry are some of the easiest things that we could do, some of the most obvious things that we could do. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about the opportunity that exists in your customer base. And for you managers, for you dealers joining us in your salespeople's customer base, we're going to talk about customer base management. Now, 
for some of you managers, you've maybe heard your people tell you, you know, when you say, hey, get on the phone, make things happen, you might have heard them say, I already called everyone. And what does that really mean? That really means that they've called people who are looking to buy a car today. They've called their hottest prospects. But here's what they haven't done. And here's what I recommend you asking them to do for your salespeople. And for you salespeople, ask yourself, let's go into your CRM and pull out a customer at random. This is important, at random, that was sold eight months ago or a year ago, whatever it is. And ask yourself or ask your salesperson, for this customer, Mr. and Mrs. Stevens, can you tell me how many drivers are in this person's household listed by name, who are those drivers, and who is going to be next in the market for a car? Now, you managers, I recommend doing this. Go through a few of their customers. Salespeople, test yourself. Look at a few. You know, for Lance and Judy Anderson, they bought a Highlander. How many drivers are in their household? So if you don't know how many, obviously, you don't know who's next. And then what more important information could you actually have to manage your client base? Finish the sentence. Think about this for a second. Blank is power. Knowledge is power, right? Information is power. And yet we don't tend to have the most basic, the most important, and this is basic stuff. In 2018, it's amazing, but we don't have it to get into our sold customer base. And what is this information? It's how many drivers are in the household, listed by name, and bottom line, who is going to be in the market next for a vehicle? You need control over your customer base. All right? So now let's take, let's do a little math here, just to really demonstrate the opportunity. All right? Based on what we were seeing for you, you all attendees, for some of you really having been here just less than six months, um, over 10 years, we're going to take kind of an average. Let's say somebody at about four years at a dealership, let's just say that they have about 500 customers in their customer base. How many drivers are in the average American household? I'll tell you, it is 2.3 drivers in the average American household. I'm not that great at math, and I want to make this as fun of an hour as possible, so we are going to knock off the point three. Okay. <laughs> we are just going to say there are two drivers in the average American household, and so this really means that you should have access to a thousand drivers and vehicles. Do you follow me so far, Eliana? Yes. Okay. So let me ask you, Eliana, just to update my records, how many drivers are there in your household? Two. Okay. Okay. Two. So yourself and who's the other driver? My husband. Your husband. Okay. And of the two of you, between you and your husband, who do you think would be most likely to be in the market next, just sometime in the future? Uh, I, me, actually. <laughs> um, okay, you are? And, and why do you say yourself? Um, well, <laughs> uh, usually we have a lot of cars. We don't just have two cars. And uh, my husband does construction, so he has his big, huge pickup truck that he drives. But um, I usually like to have a convertible, and it's springtime, and it's coming up to summer, and so I usually get a convertible along with my regular car. So we're actually actively searching right now for a convertible. So you're in the market right now. See, now I know. And I also, I find out that I've stumbled into a little bit of a fleet account. <laughs> 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 no, that's that's for sure because my husband likes to have a second car as well because you know his truck only gets like nine miles to the gallon. So, <laughs> so let's say let's say I was the salesperson who sold Eliana's husband his truck. If I'm not asking the questions, how do I know? How do I know that I might have the convertible? I might be able to get that for Eliana so that I can control that situation. So, how many of you salespeople can tell me for your customer base? And I'll tell you. The best absolutely can. The salespeople who crush it, they do it with math. So again, 500, if I've sold cars into 500 households and there are two drivers in the average American household, that's 1,000 drivers. I'm okay enough at math to really be able to do this. That's 1,000 drivers and vehicles that I really should have first crack at. But in order to have first crack, I need to know. I need to know how many drivers there are in the household and who's next. So let's say that the average person, for the sake of this math, trades out of cars, how often? Maybe every four years. You know, I, we do this exercise at some of our management by fire events. I hear three years a lot, but I just want to go extremely conservative here. For the sake of this math and these numbers, 
So I'm gonna say the average person is trading out every four years. Let's do that math. So a thousand drivers and vehicles that I should have first crack at, trading out every four years, bam. That is 250 potential opportunities where somebody is gonna be buying, selling, or trading out of a vehicle in a household that I should have control over. So now we just need to determine of these 250 potential opportunities, how many people can I really retain? And again, for the sake of being conservative, I wanna, do, I wanna say 50%. Now listen, if I was still at the dealership, if I was selling cars, I wouldn't be happy with 50. I would say I should be able to retain 75% of the transactions going down in my household. But they ask yourself about your lineup. You know, are you selling cars, trucks? Do you have SUVs? Do you have some hybrids? Do you have a good used car lineup? Let that determine. I've just used 50% here for the sake of example. But really ask yourself, what percentage do you think you should be able to retain? I'm going light, I'm going conservative, and let's just say 50%. So 50%, that is 125 deals every year that we have determined I should be able to retain going down in my customer base and every month, what? That's about 10 cars via repeat customers every month that I should have crack at with just a customer base of 500. So that concludes our math here. Now, what, how, how do I really want to you know, demonstrate this? I think that most salespeople, if you really look, if you, managers, if you look at your team and salespeople, if you ask yourself, if you do this equation, ask yourself, how many people, how many repeat clients did you actually sell last month? When I do this exercise with people, I find out that often the number is smaller than the math leads us to, even when we're being conservative. So really being able to do work out this formula with yourself, with your team, it's critical, it's of critical importance. So we have a handout in the, in the webinar that's going to walk you through this formula and it is the very first thing I want you to do when we get off the webinar today is do that math and really determine the difference between what you think you should be selling to repeat clients and what's actually going down in your car count. Now, one thing I wanna ask, if there's a difference, if let's say for the salesperson who has 500 customers in their customer base, but only sold, let's say, five or six repeat clients last month, I want you to consider that those other four or five people, they didn't just not buy cars. They're not buying cars with less frequently frequency. They're just probably buying somewhere else. So again, what we're talking about is how to drive business, how to control this situation, and really be proactive. This is what I mean when I talk about creating a proactive culture. I want you doing this math yourself and with your team so that you can really determine. Now, a lot of our poll uh, answerers here told us that they have been at the dealership for less than six months. So what would I do? If I've been at the dealership less than six months and I don't necessarily have a customer base of even 500 people, what I would do is I would get my hands on every orphan owner I possibly could. It would be my goal to get that number up to 1,500 or 2,000 quickly of customers in my base and orphan owners is going to be how we do that. I want you all thinking, you know, especially you managers, you dealers, if I started working your dealership tomorrow and I said I wanted a bunch of orphan owners, how many realistically could you give me? How many do you have floating around in the system? Rather than selling cars at one at a time, I would be calling these people. I would be introducing myself to them as my new point of contact at, at their new point of contact at the dealership. I would introduce myself. I would say, hi, this is Laura Madison calling from ABC Motors. The reason I'm calling is because Travis, who you bought your last car with, is no longer with us. And we want to make sure that you understand our job. It doesn't, it doesn't end at time of delivery. That's really when it's just beginning. So I wanted to introduce myself and see if there's anything I can assist you with, with, with your Camry. Now, if a customer hears this, what are they thinking right now? They're thinking, oh, this is awesome. So we touch base, we introduce ourselves, and then what do you think we roll into? We roll right in to, hey, just to update my records, how many drivers are there in your household? Because as far as I'm concerned, when you have introduced yourself to those orphan owners, they are no longer orphaned. That is, those become people in your sold customer base and households that you have control over. 
And so I ask, of the two of you that drive, who's going to be next for a vehicle just sometime in the future? Okay, she is, and when do you think that's going to be? And there you go. That's the information that I would be getting out of these people because calling these people up, I'm going to bump into a bunch of car deals just like I did with Eliana. And even if I don't bump into a car deal right now, these people all need cars eventually, right? They all know people who need cars as well. I, but I can't tell you, when you do this exercise, how many people, just like Eliana just showed us, will say, hey, it's funny you called. We were just thinking about getting something new. So orphan owners and, and the opportunity that exists in the orphan owner customer bases and in the sold customer bases, it is fierce. It is just enormous. So I want you thinking about that again. Some of the things that are most impactful, have the biggest impact in our industry, are some of the easiest things really to execute on. So I wanted to mention too, before we move on to our next strategy, I want to mention a story after Alan spoke and shared this math at a 20 group some time ago, there was a dealer there whose light bulb went off. And he said, you know what, I have a couple salespeople who have a lot of customers in their customer base. I have a lot of people, you know, they have a lot of people that they could be reaching out to and they want to be doing the right things, but we haven't always necessarily given them the best guidance. So here's what he decided to do. He decided to look at two of his salespeople and average their 90-day income, you know, or take their income over a 90-day average and guarantee that to them for one month. Only if they do this, here's the qualifier. They had to have customers, they had to have a significant amount of customers in their base that they weren't necessarily working, that they weren't asking these questions to. And he said, I'm gonna guarantee you this income for the coming month, but here's our deal. You're not gonna go golf this month. You're just going to spend all month calling up your customers and reintroducing yourselves to them, reconnecting with them, that's it. It's operation, client base, customer base. You're not gonna take a single up, you're not gonna take phone ups, you're not gonna take internet leads. All you're gonna do is call up sold clients and reacquaint yourself with your own client base. Do some chit chat, you know, you're connected on social media, you've got something to talk about, and then roll into it. Hey, just to update my records, how many drivers are there in your household? And of the three of you that drive, okay, who's gonna be next in the market for a vehicle? When do you think that'll be? And I'm telling you, if you listening to this now have a customer base and have not been engaging in this activity, you're going to be able to dominate. You're going to be able to, I'm telling you, have the biggest month you've ever had. This dealer, after he assigned this, both salespeople, they busted through their guarantees, just calling up customers who, who they had already sold cars to and bumping into people who were ready to buy cars. It was powerful. They had the best month they had ever had. And the other thing that it did when they were collecting this information is it helped them plan because not everybody's going to be ready. Not everybody's Eliana looking for their summer convertible. So you're going to know if it's six months down the road, if it's a year, you're, I want to sell them a car then too when the time comes. So that's a powerful thing that you salespeople could be doing. New managers can really encourage in your teams to be able to start to shift the culture because I'm telling you, once they taste some success and say, yes, this makes sense, this is it, you start to change the culture at the dealership. So operation client base, it is a powerful way. How many drivers are in the household listed by name and who is up next in the market for a vehicle? That's the first brilliant strategy for driving more traffic to the showroom. Now, we're gonna move on. And we're gonna talk about social media and what I think is so important today. My aim is to really provide clarity into what behavior on social media is gonna be effective and what behavior is not so effective. So you can cut it out and really make sure that your activity on social media converts to sales. But first, I've got a poll question for you, Aliana. Yes, we do. All right, audience, you guys are doing great. I'm already getting some wonderful questions from you. So thank you so much. Let's keep those rolling in. And like I said, she's a first-time dealer on webinar presenter. Do not go easy on her. Give her the hard questions. All right, but for right now, we're looking for your answer to this poll question. So get on your keyboards and let us know. How much do you feel social media currently impacts car sales at your dealership? We want to know. Do you feel it is a strong social media presence that makes a huge difference? Do you feel that, you know what, your dealership's not consistent on social media and it shows in the ROI? How about, you know what, our dealership hardly does social media at all and it's just not a priority over here. How about, you know what, I don't really know because we have almost no social media at our dealership. 
or silly question. You can't sell cars through social media. We want to know what you think about social media. Do you think it's an effective tool that will help you sell cars or someplace in the middle? Let's find out. A lot of you have voted already. Still waiting for a lot more votes to come in. And like I said, lots of questions have already come in for you, Laura. So hunker down. You're going to be sitting in that chair answering some questions from our audience for a little while. And uh, votes are coming in nice and fast. Audience, thank you so much for answering our poll question. How important do you feel social media is to sales at your dealership? Really important, somewhat important, hardly important at all. You know what, we really don't know. Or please, you can't sell cars through social media. Once we get a majority of those, those votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. Oh, I wish I had some music in the background. <laughs> By the way, Laura, you're doing great. N never a doubt. All right, um, I think we should close this poll and share the results. Not everyone has voted. But enough votes have come in. All right, audience, thank you so much for your votes. Laura, are you ready to see this? I'm ready. Audience, thank you so much. All right, here we go. How much do you feel that social media currently impacts car sales at your dealership? Well, the majority, 39% of you, said that our strong social media presence makes a huge difference. I would have to agree. 34% of you, following right on the heels of that, says, you know what? Our dealership's not consistent on social media. And it kind of shows in the ROI. 19% of today's audience say, I don't think social media impacts our car sales at our dealership at all. Social media just isn't a priority over here. 6% says, I don't really know because we have almost no social media. And 3% think that you just can't sell cars through social media. Ooh, throwing down the gauntlet, 3%. All right, Laura, where do we go from here? I mean, I know how you feel about social media. Do you need to share with the audience how you feel about social media? <laughs> what I think is so critical is really determining what type of activity on social media is actually effective. So it's great to see all of these responses, see some of the differentiation. And what I want you thinking about is how do I level up from wherever you are how do I level it up? If you're not consistent, what kind of consistent activity is really going to get you results? And for you all who it's not a priority, we're going to talk about how to make it a priority. But make it make sense and really be able to bring results. Now, I want to, before we hop in and really take a look, I want to show you some examples. But I also, for those of you who may not be that familiar, this is really my area of, of experience. I was Fortunate enough, I came into the car business when I was 21, so I was young. I had just moved to Montana from the East Coast, kind of on a whim. So I didn't have a big connection. I didn't have any, you know, friends, relatives really out there. And I had to, when I started selling cars, I had to think about what can I be doing? What tool can I be using to drive business to me? Because I couldn't just get on the phone with, with my friends, with my family. I was 2,000 miles away. So I started using social media, and I was fortunate enough to have a lot of success and some stumbles to figure out really what type of uh, activity is effective, and that's what I'm going to show you here. So what I think is important, especially for those of you who have indicated it's not a priority or it's not consistent, we need to first look at how I see most salespeople using social media and why it's maybe not so effective. So here's our first example. I've protected the not so innocent. Somebody says, anyone looking to buy a new car, I can help you out. I can also give you $100. If you know anyone looking for a new car, message me. Now, some of you might be looking at this like, what's so bad about this? I'll show you in just a minute. But first, I'm going to get a little more aggressive. Who is looking for a new car? My owner has lost his mind with the pricing he has going on right now. Find your dream car and save money with the person at the dealership. We're getting serious there, Eliana, with the caps lock. And next. <laughs> Wait, caps lock is always, right? We always put the caps lock. <laughs> Final, this gentleman does. He says, we got a sale going on. You tell us what you want to pay folks uh, any of our vehicles. <laughs> As, and I've protected his identity here, but he's also tagged 75 of his closest friends, including me. And I, I'll just tell you all, although I want to go there, I have never, I've not yet been to Alabama, so I was not physically with him making this video. I'm going to explain to you why these posts are not effective, and it's based on what they're missing. Again, some of you might look and say, you know what, that's not going to get me in trouble with my manufacturer. I don't see anything wrong. But these are salespeople thinking with their sales brain, 
and they're not considering human connection. They're not considering the customer behavior. See, human connection and the way our customers use social media are the two things that make social so darn effective in 2018. You know, so many people talk about the millennials and the generations and we're losing the human touch, right? They're on the screens all the time. And I'll tell you what I found with social media is that it actually reintroduced a human connection. The first time, and I've, I've mentioned this in the past, but I think it's worth a, you know, worth a mention here as well. The first sale that I ever had using social media came from a woman who had totaled her car and she had been all over the internet after she hit the deer with her car, she had been all over the internet looking at reviews, looking at Edmonds, looking at what Consumer Reports said about vehicles. And it wasn't until she saw a YouTube video that I had filmed in my driveway on a Sunday, just trying to wi take wild action on social media. It wasn't until she saw that video that she came into a dealership. She came into my dealership about 10 minutes before closing one night and she drove out, not in a Highlander, but in a used uh, Tahoe that I had to borrow from, from our sister store uh, in the lot adjacent. And when she drove away that night, I knew that I was onto something because I understood that during all of the research this gal Catherine had done, nothing had motivated her to come in until she made a real human connection, until she saw that there was a person here to help her make a decision. You know, she never asked me about the video, about how I started making videos or and what other videos I had. She didn't care. All she knew was that after she Google searched Toyota Highlander, that I was a human here to help her make a decision. I had made a connection and that became my North Star for social media. I wanted people to get to know me and to make that connection with me. Now, I also want to consider the fact that not all of my customers are in the market for a vehicle every single day on Facebook. And I will tell you guys, I'm excited to do this webinar on the very first of the month because I love this about our business, that we get a do-over <laughs> every month. So no matter how you did in February, no matter if you were a hero or if you missed your mark, everybody starts clean today. And I will tell you that the even yesterday, as we close the month, I stayed the heck off social. Even though we have this webinar today that I wanted to promote, I can't sign on to social media on the last day of the month because all I see are messages like this. It's desperation. It's the world's worst cologne. So I want to introduce you quickly to Roger. This is a review that Roger left me online. He says, Laura, thanks for all you do. This is the sixth Toyota I have bought from you and Russell Toyota Bozeman. You are absolutely the best salesperson and take such good care of me over the last few years. Thanks again. I really do appreciate you finding the right vehicle for me at the best price, best Roger. Roger, why I want to introduce you to him is because we had a human connection. We had a relationship that we developed after he saw my first my a Tundra video. It was the first video that he had seen of mine, but he was shopping for a Tundra and he saw it, he called. And the really amazing thing, just going back to Roger here, the amazing thing about him is he was one of my top customers. He bought a number of cars from me over the years when I worked there. He was a top referrer. He sent me his brother in Wyoming. I sold him a Tundra. I sold his new wife a vehicle. His wife's uh, two kids both bought cars from me. And the amazing thing about Roger and this connection we had that it originated on social media, so I never actually met him. Roger lived in Salt Lake City, six hours south of Bozeman, Montana. And so every time Roger wanted to buy a car for himself, for his son, we would carefully put the car up on freight and we would ship it to Salt Lake at Roger's expense. So the opportunity that exists when we talk about really creating relationships and human connection on social media, it is profound. It is beyond any territory I think any people really could imagine. So I want to show you really why. This is something that came out recently that I'd recommend you peeking into if you haven't, but Zuckerberg, he has said, I get it. He said that he understands customer behavior. He understands that people don't sign on be to Facebook because they want to know that you've got three tires, buy one free, or you know, buy three tires, get one free. He knows that people sign on to connect, to be entertained, and so this needs to guide your social media activity. I'll show you what it looks like. Here's a post where I share the, per the six steps for the perfect test drive. 
I like using this as an example because it is a perfect way that I educated customers. I made up the six steps, okay? There's no actual, as, as far as I know, <laughs> real six steps. I made these up, but I wanted to educate people on the car buying process. We have a unique opportunity to do that. A lot of people, they have anxiety about buying cars. We can help educate them. There are different posts for education that also could be about a new product that you have. This is where I share the new details of a redesign. I say, click to see the changes. Frick, I'm excited about this truck. We have changes going on in our lineup every year. There's so much opportunity to educate our customers on social media about what's happening, about our product, about, about how sexy it is. And it's not in your face. It's not a buy, buy, buy. It is not car spam. Because that's what I call those posts that tag 75 of your closest friends on the last day of the month. That, my friends, is car spam. This, even if you're not in the market today, you might be curious to hear what they changed, what's new. I would also do comparisons like Highlander versus Forerunner. That was a question I got all of the time on the lot. What is the difference between these two SUVs? So I made a video and I did some social posts about the difference and the result was phenomenal. I'll never forget shortly after I posted a note on Facebook laying out the differences between the two SUVs, Highlander and Forerunner, I had somebody come in on a Saturday morning before anybody else, you know, it's just that quiet time on a Saturday morning, kind of before the windfall. She comes in with a piece of paper clutching it in her hand. She was a professor at Montana State University. She had been online doing her research and found this article and she came, she walked past the gaggle of salespeople in the front door. She said, Laura, I'm here to see you. I am definitely the Forerunner customer. I need more of that body on frame. I need that, you know, I read the article, I need that Forerunner, and I like the nautical blue color, and I think you have one in the limited trim level out front. I'll tell you guys, that was one of my quickest car deals. That was somebody who used the information that I had put out on social media, and I wasn't even connected to her. I was connected to somebody in my network who liked or commented or shared that information, and I, I was provided with that introduction. Now, the other thing that I love about sharing this post specifically is you all can see i'm not ashamed of it i am not a celebrity i had 11 12 13 14 people like this post so i am not winning any popularity contests and one of them is actually paige madison is my sister so i'm telling you <laughs> she's not buying a car for me she's still a phd student it's not happening definitely not a tacoma i i can't believe you sold a car to this uh, to a person because of this post and you use the word frick <laughs> I'm just kidding. That is a pretty amazing story. I can't, I can't see you pulling off Frick, but I think I'm nerdy enough. I think I'm, I'm uh, My last example, I just wanted to, I want you all to ask yourself, you managers, you know, when was the last time on a Saturday or Friday morning that you asked your people to check in and salespeople, when was the last time you checked in to your dealership and just said, hey, I'm over here. You don't have to say anything. You just check in. But I can't tell you guys, I'm connected to so many of you all on social media, and I can't tell you how many times I see you check in at the gym. You don't get paid to do that. So check in at your dealership and use social media in a less direct way. I want to show you a quick video of some of the topics that I use that you'll see are really aimed at creating this connection, at educating people, at really kind of giving them something, rather than just spamming them and throwing sales messages at them. All right. Hello. Hello. Well, while you're trying to get that video up and working, Tanya wrote in. She says, I love that Laura shared real numbers and that it doesn't take a lot of views. All right. Here it does not. It does not. All right. Fantastic. Hey, Laura here from lauradrives.com and Toyota Bozeman. I'm sitting here in our supercharged Tundra. And then I want to show you the 2015 Toyota Prius V. I want to do a quick competitive comparison on the 2014 redesigned Chevy Silverado, 2014 redesigned Toyota Tundra. I want to give you six tips for the perfect test drive. I want to share a study that the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety just released about voice systems, so the technology in a new vehicle. And this is the first 2014 Toyota Highlander Hybrid to hit the ground in Hey, Laura here with LauraDrives.com and Toyota Bozeman. I want to show you how much room you have 
cargo space when you've got the third row up in the optional third row Toyota 4Runner. You can contact me for more information about this or other used vehicles we have, and thanks so much for watching. Okay, I'm just going to st stop you right there. That is yeah. super cute. <laughs> so before you go any further, how often would you put out one of these videos? Like, did you have a schedule? Did you say, oh, I have to put out at least one video a week? What's my next topic going to be? Or did you really just wait until you had a topic in mind and then you're like, you know what? I'm going to do a video on this. You know, I the way that I looked for topics is by listening to what my customers were asking me at the dealership because I understood, Eliana, if they were asking me a question, if I was hearing some of the same questions over and over at the right. dealership, we tend to do, then I knew people were ty typing that in to a search engine, to Google, and I wanted to be able to answer it for them and provide that introduction. I'll tell you my frequency was not, nowhere near where I think most people expect. I think on my good weeks, I had three posts including one video. Some, some weeks, maybe I could get two videos out, but a lot of the times, I'll tell you, I was busy selling cars. So it's, we talk about in our social selling course, a 10 minute rule a day. You can get a lot done in 10 minutes on social media, but I don't think it is a huge time suck. And I'll tell you, those videos were all filmed with my iPhone. No expensive production, no lights. It was my iPhone leaned up on the dashboard and that's how I got it done. Great. And I, you know what I, I really love about it? It doesn't cost you anything. It, you put that one post up that 14 people liked plus your sister, and you sold a car from that. It took you a couple minutes. You posted the article. It, didn't, it mm -hmm. wasn't even a video. And you sold a car from that, and it cost yep. you zero. That's awesome. Yep. Yep, zero dollars. And so for some of the dealers and managers on, I want them thinking, if they have Eliana got 15 salespeople and the average salesperson is connected to 350 friends on Facebook, for no money, how many people could we be reaching? Again, in a relationship, in a, in a, you know, a human kind of a way. And I want to show you what the right activity really looks like. It, it creates connection. It builds relationship. I've really mentioned that. Even when I say, frick, I'm excited about this, there's some human tone there. You can really start to get a flavor of how nerdy I am and who I really am. It made people feel much more comfortable with me, even when they were meeting me for the very first time, coming in to buy a car. And what it happens when you have the right activity on social is you create a retention and a referral engine. And I want to show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Somebody I'm not connected to, this gal, Sarah, who says she did so many test drives, and a customer of mine who had sold a van to tags me, says, talk to Laura Madison. She is the best there. That is the referral of 2018. Here's another example. This is the, uh, this sweet couple. We're about to have their baby. And Sarah writes, Bob is coming into the world in style, hashtag no more minivan, with her husband, Aaron. Oh, that's and really cute. Is, right? And, and listen, this photo, it was taken after I thanked them and walked away. This was authentic to them. And Aaron shares it and says, so glad to get my ladies into a new and safe vehicle. Resto Trader is amazing. Go see Laura Madison for a new car. She lives every week like sh it's Shark Week. I think, I think it was Shark Week that week. I think that's what that significance was. But I'll tell you, neither of these referrals really had my, or shout outs, had my involvement. They happened organically because I was doing the right things on social media. And both of them resulted in showroom visits from people I wasn't already connected to. People I would have never otherwise known. So the opportunity is profound and I mentioned it. But what social media is not, is it's not a popularity contest. And I always like to show this example to drive that point home and to close out this brilliant strategy for driving traffic. It is not a popularity contest. Here's a video I did uh, with 46,000 views about the Toyota Yaris. And I will tell you, Eliana, it's, I have no shame. This has never sold me a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's got views, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. It, you know, it went semi-viral. It went viral for the Toyota Yaris, right? But it turns out that we don't sell a lot of Yarises in Montana. And most of these views were in Ireland, where apparently the Yaris is very popular. So, I <laughs> so you, you did help sell some Yarises, although it didn't put any money in your pocket. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere people bought more Yarises. Yeah, but just not with me and not in the United States. So it's not a popularity contest. And I think sometimes salespeople, managers, dealerships, they get caught up in the numbers and the views and it doesn't always translate. You know, I would have posts with five engagements, but it would sell a car. 
or it would get me a lead that would give me that opportunity. And that's worth shouting out more than 46,000 views. So an another brilliant strategy, again, to drive more traffic to the showroom. And I'm going to wrap this last one up very quickly, but I think it's so important to lay out the how once and for all we use the telephone and the inbound opportunity to drive more traffic to the showroom. But first, of course, you have to do a quick poll. Quick poll. Let's try and do this as fast as possible. People, get to your keyboards. We want to know the answer to this poll question. When was the last time that you personally participated in any type of training on inbound and outbound phone calls at your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Just this morning, we'll also take just this week, we train on that constantly. Within the last month, we have a recurring training schedule and phone calls is one of the things that we train on, among other things. Gosh, you know, I think it's been like a year or more. Our dealership's just not consistent with training. Does self-training count? <laughs> My dealership really doesn't do hardly any training. Or training schmaining, I know what I'm doing over here. All right, once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. Votes are coming in fast. My audience is on it. Thank you so much, audience. We're going to keep this poll open for another few seconds, and we're going to hopefully get more votes in. We want to know when was the last time you participated in any type of training on inbound and outbound phone calls at your dealership. Please select one of those answers, and let's get to it. And um, by the way, we have some great questions that have come in. Ironically, though, I've had like three or four different people ask the same question. So hopefully, we're going to get a good answer to that as well from you, Lara. All right, get those questions in. Like I said, no holds barred. First time webinar presenters, don't get a pass. Ask your toughest questions. All right, <laughs> let's close up this poll audience. Thank you so much for your votes and your participation in all three of our poll questions. Let's see what you had to say. When was the last time you participated in any type of training on inbound and outbound phone calls at your dealership? 12% of today's audience said, hey, just this morning or just this week, we train on that constantly. Majority, however, 31% of today's audience say they did it within the last month and that they have a recurring training schedule at their dealership. That's great. Another 31% of today's audience said, ooh, I think it might be more like a year or more. Yeah, our dealership is just not consistent when it comes to training. 22% of today's audience say, does self-training count? Ugh, my dealership doesn't train. And 4% of today's audience, well, training schmaining. I know what I'm doing over here. All right, Laura. I just want to know what you thought was the correct answer to this question. How often, I mean, look, yes, it's great to say, hey, we train on that constantly, but what's a really good rule of thumb? Because if we're being honest, yes, inbound and outbound phone call training is very important, but isn't others training topics important too? So how often would you like to see training on this subject? Eliana, I want to see it consistently. I want to see it constantly. And the reason for that is because of everything we've discussed, our, our buyers are visiting less dealerships in person, which means that the difference today between making a deal and missing one is knowing what to say on the phones. And that's how we have to make it happen, both on inbound, on outbound. I want it consistently. And I, I'm realistic. Okay, I understand a lot of the, you know, time constraints that people work within, especially you managers within a normal day, but what can you get done in three to five minutes? I'm going to show you specifically what you can get done to make that happen. Now, here's what I want to explain. Training and maintaining your team. There's a difference between thinking you trained your people and really training them or thinking you've gone through training and having it really be actual training. In order for training to actually be effective, for something to actually be called training that really is, it has to have these elements. It has to have education, simulation, and it has to have accountability with consequence. We tend to confuse education with training. So I just want to be clear. Education, it's understanding something. You can be educated in something without being trained in it. You know, I can watch baseball on TV and I'm educated in it. But when I go to a baseball game, is that called training? You know, do I say, hey, I've got two tickets for, for tonight's game. I'm going to go train in baseball. No, that's educational. You know, it's same thing. I, I understand it. I can understand it without being trained. They're two totally different things. So what do you have to do in order for it to be training? You have to simulate. 
If you don't have simulation, you don't have training, batting practice, fielding practice, and who does it? Everybody does batting practice and fielding practice, right? It's not just the rookies. So I want to show you, and really, Eliana, to answer that question, I want to show you what this can look like in a couple short minutes and how effective that simulation piece can be to really consistent training. Oops, let's scoot ring, ring. Thank you for calling Ryan Carter, home of the Motor Training Center for Advantage Studio. This is Lorenzo speaking. How can I help you? Hey, Lorenzo, I was on your guys' website, and I was looking at a 2013 Fusion that you have on there. And I just want to get a little bit more information about that vehicle. Which Fusion is that? Is there, is there a stack number listed? Yes, yeah, PRC27224, Amber. It was PRC27224? Yes. Great. The reason I asked is because the vehicles we have listed on our website is just a small representation of the vehicles we actually have available. We've been selling so many new parts lately with all of the new parts promotions we have going on that we have been taking in a lot of trades as a result, not only in the Fusions, but other vehicles like it as well. Okay, Chase. Uh, you said a 13. Would you also consider a 14 uh, as well to continue your budget? Absolutely. Okay, and great. Besides Fusion, are there any, uh, asides from that, any other models that you would consider as well? Uh, maybe a Sonata or something like that, Roy. You have to buy this today, dude. No. Great. Let me do this. Let me take a look and see what Fusions and Sonatas we have available now, but also what we have coming in the next couple days on trade. It shouldn't take me very long. Okay, Courtney. Uh, what's a good number you're calling from? Uh, 614. 836-6516. Is that a cell phone number? No, that's my business number. Okay, in case I miss you at that number, what's the cell phone number for you? 740-274-2227. And your last name? It's Bird. And your first name? Brandon. All right, Mr. Bird, can you hold for a moment? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Wood. Mr. Bird, you still there? Yes. Great. I just checked, and as I indicated earlier, we've been selling so many new cars that we have no shortage of pre-owned vehicles. Your biggest challenge here won't be finding a vehicle. It'll be narrowing it down just to one. By the way, what are you currently driving? Uh, Gina, I got a 2008 Civic. 2008 Civic. Is that a vehicle you can start trading, Mr. Bird? Oh, yeah. All right. What's your overall condition of the vehicle? I would call it about average. Okay. And about how many mileage? 62,000. 62,000. That's a great vehicle for us. We have people who come in who need a vehicle but can't always afford to get a brand new vehicle. So they look for something a few years older, a little bit more mileage onto it that they can get into it more affordably. We call these a transition vehicle, and because we have such a high demand for them, my appraisers tend to pay quite a bit more for them. Okay, Lorenzo. Mr. Burr, when will be a good time for us to get together? As a matter of fact, what are you doing right now? I, I, I'm still at work right now, um, but maybe later this evening. How about 6 o'clock time for you? 6 o'clock sounds awesome, Chase. Great. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my calendar for 6. Uh, if you're running a little early or a little late, please give me a call so I can adjust my schedule. Okay, Amber. Mr. Burr, do you have pen and paper maybe? I do. Great. I want you to take my name down. My last name is L E E. My first name is Amber, A-M-B-E-R. And do you know exactly where we're located? Yeah, right there at the 270 and 33. Right, right. And Mr. Bergado, what's your email address? Bird at Riker.com. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> or that prick. I don't know. <laughs> that is excellent. That, that is awesome. It is strong, right? And, and can you imagine, you know, I want everybody here asking themselves, can my managers do that? Can I myself do that? That's simulation. And that's what you have to do for your people to get good. It's training. It's not magic. It takes a little bit of work. But how long did that really take? That was about three minutes, right? You know, for him to do that with the whole staff, they do a fantastic job. And you'll notice that everybody in that exercise, they have to be on their toes. Right? So three minutes, imagine your manager doing that with your staff for three minutes, and boom, now you know that your people are ready to take a sales call. And then finally, there has to, of course, be accountability with consequence. Otherwise, your standard is merely a suggestion. So listen, just because somebody's been working at the dealership for three years doesn't give them the right to blow customers out on the phone. So the last thing that I really want, to, want everybody to consider and that I'm so excited to get in after our resources, our action items, to some questions, but I want you to act. I want you to act on the fact that your biggest opportunity for growth is missed opportunities to do business, is missed opportunities on some of the things we've talked about here today, some of the strategies. It's missed opportunities of transactions going down in our customer base that we don't know about. It's missed opportunities because we're not doing the right things on social media, and it's missed opportunities because of the training that we think we've had wasn't really training. It didn't include that simulation, and it didn't have the elements that are necessary for training to really be effective. Now, a couple resources 
for people to dig into after today's call. One, I love, I'm telling you guys, the NCM Associates blog, the Up to Speed blog, it is fire. It is fantastic. There is so much info there for dealers, for managers, for salespeople, so check it out. I think it's one of our industry's best kept secrets. Another resource, of course, would be our Management by Fire event. Brandon, who you just saw simulate with his team, had just returned just a couple weeks prior to filming that video from one of our Management by Fire events. It's two and a half days of processes to get more people to the showroom. And of course, we also have the online library. And we're going to be giving that giveaway up in a few minutes here. I'm so excited for that. And then finally, my resource is a game changer life. It's Dave Anderson's podcast. And he just also published a book, The Game Changer Life, the book. I would recommend both highly. It is just, it's fantastic. It'll really get everybody thinking about leveling up. And hey, you dealers, I would say you assign it to your management team. Have everybody go through it. It is powerful and it is actionable. And speaking of action, I've got a couple things for you today. Now, please make sure that you use the resource that we've provided for you. Action item number one is fine tune your inbound phone skills. So if you need to simulate a little bit with your spouse or with one of the people you sell with or new managers, if you need to simulate more with your team, I hope this is an aha moment. And I also want to make sure that you are having your finger to the pulse of call monitoring. We have determined that conversion is critical in today's automotive industry. So just as you wouldn't let salespeople blow customers out in the showroom, you can't let them do it on the phones. You have to be listening to the call monitoring and knowing what's happening there. Second, operation customer base. Whether it's a manager assigning this to a team or whether it is salespeople, you listening, you have to reacquaint yourself with your sold customer base. How many drivers are there in the household listed by name and who's next in the market for a vehicle? And if you don't have a sold customer base, get your hands on some orphan owners. Make sure your bosses know you're hungry and you're going to make it happen. And finally, you revamp your social activity. Do a little audit. You don't have to tell me or Eliana what you found now that you know a little bit more about what social media activity is effective. But get rid of that car spam and revamp it and think human connection is your North Star on social media. And all three of these items are going to help you drive more business this month to the showroom. So that's what I've got for you now. I'm hoping we have a lot of questions. Like I say, this is my favorite part. <laughs> oh, we got questions, girl. <laughs> you get yourself a drink of water or coffee or whatever. Let me talk to the audience for a little bit. All right, audience. So we have a number of things that are going to be going on from now until the end of this broadcast. First thing I want to do is encourage you to ask those questions of Laura Madison. Yes, first time dealer on webinar presenter. Hit her with the tough stuff, babes. All right. Let's get those questions in. We already have a lot in the queue, and we're looking forward to helping you drive more traffic to your showroom. All right. So get those questions in. We're going to get to them in just a minute. Before we do that, I do want to direct your attention over to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. In that handout section, you're going to find four awesome handouts for you. They're available for immediate download until the end of this broadcast. First one I want to show you is Laura Madison's slide deck. It's titled Three Brilliant Strategies to Drive Traffic to Your Showroom. So you can download that and have all of that great information at your fingertips. She's also included three others. One of them is a one-sheeter about the upcoming May Management by Fire conference that she's holding. So if you want to know more about that, she has that in there. And there's certainly more Management by Fire conferences coming up later this year, different dates, different cities, hopefully a city near you. And then she has another handout in there about the Management by Fire curriculum. So if you want to know what's included in all of that awesomeness, that two and a half day curriculum is included in there as well. And then finally, she has, uh, Laura, I might have to bring you in for this. What is this handout? Sell more cars by mastering activity management sheet. What is that? That is a blog post that I just published that I thought would give some more clarity to your ABCs, do activities between customers. So that's going to be a great article, just something to review for salespeople, for managers, for dealers watching. It's going to be powerful. 
Fantastic. All right. So audience, if you have any problem whatsoever downloading any of those, please just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com and I will help you out. But for right now, those should be available to you right now. And like I said, until the very end of this broadcast. So get to it, people. All right. Good stuff in there. Um, hey, you can turn on your webcam now if you wouldn't mind, Laura. We are going to get to some fun stuff now. If you were here at uh, earlier in the in the beginning of the program, you heard me announce that we have some great giveaways today from our friends over at Alan Rams Proactive Training. So you can go to the next slide, Laura. That's right. I announced that our good friends at Alan Ram, they're giving away two cool prizes on today's webinar. First, one lucky attendee is going to win a free 90 days of access to Alan Ram's endless online training library. This is a great prize for you and your dealership. Then after we get through that, by the way, that prize, that first prize, is valued at $695. So it's amazing, right? After we do that, then we're going to give away the grand prize. Whew, it is one seat to an upcoming Management by Fire event. You pick the date and the city that it's in, there's a whole calendar of them scheduled out, but you pick a Management by Fire event that you can attend, and oh my goodness, this prize is valued at $2,195. Game changer, people. Don't leave until we hand out this prize, let me tell you. All right, get ready, get to your keyboards. First, we're going to give away the 90 days of free access to Alan Ram's training library. So get to your keyboards. All you have to do, it's really easy. Just be the first person with the correct answer to our giveaway question, and you are a winner. All right, everyone, here we go. Good luck. Earlier in the presentation, Laura talked about social media. What did Laura say was the number one thing you should add to your posts to make them the most effective? <laughs> Tamara Swats, you are always Johnny on the spot. Let me tell you, Tamara Swats, you are the winner. She was the first one to write in Human Connection. Congratulations, Tamara. I mean, seriously, is this a full-time job for you, winning prizes on my show, Tamara? <laughs> Congratulations, Tamara. You are the lucky winner of a 90-day free access to Alan Rand's training library. Use it, girl. I know you will. Tamara, uh, of course, I, I don't need any other information from you than just what dealer should be from so I can give you proper congratulations. You'd think by now I would know it. Um, Tamara, my friend, you are already a winner, so we're going to ask you to kindly sit this one out. Next prize is for someone not named Tam Tamara Swats, all right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is for the big one, people. This is for a seat at an upcoming Management by Fire event. It's worth $2,195, and let me tell you, people, it's really, it's really priceless. The information that you're going to learn there is not like any place else. You're going to want this, so please only answer this question if you're actually going to attend. If you're not really going to attend, leave it for somebody else who can appreciate this Management by Fire event. It is a game changer, people, and I really want to see it go to some somebody that's actually going to use this information and actually going to attend. All right? Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Oh, this is exciting. According to Laura, what are the three elements that make training effective? We're looking for a three-part answer. According to Lara, what are the three elements that make training effective? Yes, Janelle Yorkowitz. Yes, you are right. Janelle Yorkowitz, first person to write in, was also the first one with the correct answer. Janelle Yorkowitz. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited for you. You, my dear friend, are going to be going to a Management by Fire training event valued at over $2,000. Use it, babe. It's awesome. By the way, according to Laura, what are the three elements that make training effective? Education, stimulation, and accountability. Congratulations, Janelle Yorkowitz. You and Tamara Swatz are both going to be hearing from our friends over at Allen Rams Proactive Solutions about collecting your uh, amazing prizes. Like I said, congratulations to you both. Okay, let me just talk to everyone else right now. Your name wasn't Tamara Swatz, nor was it Janelle Yorkowitz. Mine wasn't either. You know what? It's okay. We didn't win prizes today. But we give away cool prizes every week here on the Dealer On webinar. So you come on back to another Dealer On webinar. And who knows, that could be the day you win a great prize at a Dealer On webinar. But for right now, 
big ups to Tamara Swatz and Janelle Yorkowitz, big winners today. And of course, we got to thank our good friends over at Allen Rams Proactive Solutions for their incredible generosity. Great, great prizes today. Thank you so much. All right. Whew. Now that we got that over with, I'm excited. Laura, you ready for some questions from the audience, my friend? I'm ready. No, 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 not the big yellow question mark. The cute one with your picture on it. <laughs> there we go. All right, everyone. As you can see, Laura is not just a pretty face. This girl has all the answers. She is direct, forthright, and she's got the goods. So even if you don't want to ask your question here, guess what? We have her contact information on the screen now. Don't be afraid to reach out to her. She is really legit, one of the coolest chicks in the auto industry. So definitely reach out to her, and let's see how she might be able to help you at your dealership. For right now, though, we're going to get to some of these great questions. All right, here we go. First question came in nice and early. She wasn't the only one who asked this, by the way. Tanya Miller and Ian, and we had some other uh, people. I think it was Kevin, and I don't know. We had a lot of people who asked about this. They all want to know. How do we get the request referral spiff sheet? How do we get that referral sheet? Can you email it to us? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, you can send me a request for it at Laura at Allen Ram. I will respond with that referral sheet. And I also, I will get these information for you, those of you who asked that question. I certainly, I will get it for you. It's a powerful tool, so use it. Excellent. All right. Well, that answered like three questions right there. All right. Let's keep moving. Okay. Ian has the next question. He says, I work for a large dealer group. We have three locations, roughly one and a half hours apart. So quite frequently, a vehicle could be here one hour and literally gone the next. But we also sell 100 vehicles weekly company-wide with 50 sales staff members. Our CRM is set up where we're not in contact within seven days we can be skated. How do I retain my guests? I certainly don't want to be calling them every seven days after a purchase. I have great retention, and after only 11 months in the business, I'm already seeing repeat and referral guests. What advice do you have, Laura, for somebody in Ian's position? So if I understand this right, Eliana, do you understand that these are sold customers that Ian sold that he wants to continue to retain and retain their households? I mean, that's what I see, but Ian, if you would like to write on in and give us more detail, let's just go with that for now and let's, let's see if Ian writes in. I have an answer for that. We didn't have enough time for it today, but oh my goodness, does Facebook, does social media work as a beautiful retention tool? That's something that I saw because you know what, Ian, no long, when you're connected with somebody on Facebook, you are no longer that guy over there, down there at the dealership. I forget what his name is. Maybe it was Travis. Maybe I have his business card somewhere. You are in front of them all the time. You are accessible. They are seeing the post that you put up of the hike you went on last weekend or the vacation that you finally took. And so that is a great way to retain customers is just being connected in a personal Facebook page with them, something that's clean and professional. That's going to keep you top of mind, and you develop more of a friend relationship. And guess what, Ian? Friends never buy from somebody else, or they hardly ever buy from somebody else. So developing that friend relationship it was a powerful strategy for me. I would bump into my customers at the grocery store or at the service drive, and I would know who just had their kitchen remodeled or who just had a grandbaby born, and then we became friends. And that's a powerful way to use social media today. Okay, and Ian did write in. He says, you know what? Uh, I'm kind of new to the car business. I'm from the food service industry, so I feel I can interact well with people. So social media should be right up his alley. And um, the trouble is when he takes a day off and then he loses a deal. Oh, I know. That's a killer, isn't it? <laughs> But you need to, you know, you need to take your time off and you just do your best to develop that relationship with people and they'll be loyal to you. I agree. I agree. Okay, Ian, thank you so much. Uh, great questions. All right, next question comes in from Lisa. Okay, she wasn't the only one who asked this, but I'm going to pin it on Lisa because you used the term. And if you recall from our first poll question, we actually had a lot of new people on here who are new to the car industry. I mean, certainly at their car dealerships, we're going to assume some of them were also new to the car industry. Lisa's one of those people. She wasn't familiar with the term orphan owner. So if you ah. could please explain to her what an orphan owner is. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a great question. So 
An orphan owner would be somebody who what purchased a vehicle at the dealership, but their salesperson is no longer there. So essentially, they're, they're orphaned. They don't belong to any one salesperson. And unfortunately, it's a reality of our business. We have a lot of turnover. And so it's my experience that dealerships have orphan owner bases where Travis or Jenny or Johnny who sold them a car has moved on to another dealership, another career, and they have no contact at that dealership. So orphan owners is, again, the, somebody who bought a car from your store that really aren't attached to a salesperson. You may have some assigned to you automatically in the CRM, but that also be something that would be great to ask your managers for, and they should know that term as well. But now you can help them define it. I love it. All right. So um, now that we talked about orphan owners, and Lisa, if you have a follow-up question, let me know. But let me get to this question from Rick, which is about orphan owners. Okay. So Rick says, and it's a pretty long question, he says, orphan owners are a huge opportunity, but they seem to get lost in the maze after they are reassigned. Can you tell me if you have a process that will really work with orphan owners. It seems when you give too many orphans to someone, they're buried with activities on their daily work plan, and also veterans, I assume he means veteran car salesmen, do not want them. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's, that is such a great question. We do, we teach at Management by Fire a process, but here's what I would recommend to any managers listening who know they have an orphan owner database but don't want to distribute and have people double orphaned, here's what you do. Look at your sales team, look at people who are newer, who don't have big customer bases. For this, your veterans are excluded, all right? So it's just people who don't have a big customer base. People look at that and then determine, who do you think is gonna make it? Who do you feel like is a little hungry? And give them those orphan owners. Maybe not in a windfall, okay? I don't love the way that CRMs reassign orphan owners like in a gamut the day the salesperson leaves the dealership and you've got thousands, like you say, in a work plan. I think that this is something, a process that managers very simply can control and parse out the orphan owners to the people we think deserve them who will really work them. And then, just like we discussed today, reaching out to them, updating our records, making notes in the CRM of how many drivers are in that household listed by name and who's next to buy a vehicle and when that might be. That's going to be the best way, and I think it's a great question. We don't want to give orphan owners to veteran guys who not only don't want them, but for all intents and purposes might have orphans themselves because their sold customer base maybe hasn't been reacquainted with them. So I really recommend, again, management teams looking at the gamut, looking at the numbers, and giving it to the people who are a little bit lighter or newer to the industry that we think are going to make it and are a little hungry and we know will take action. I think that's a great idea. Okay, Rick, thank you so much for that great question. If you have a follow-up question, we'll get to it soon. Send it in. Okay, next question comes in from Connie. Connie says, with car shoppers making fewer dealership visits prior to the purchase, I think you had mentioned 1.2, and I have certainly heard that, of course, before, where are car buyers doing their research and product evaluations? Yes, presumably online, but specifically, have you heard about where... Uh, which research tool giants they are using? You know, they are, it's really interesting seeing the habits. A lot of them are on your dealer website pages. They're on True Car, and there might even be people who can give more specifics and percentage breakdowns to, the, to where exactly and how they're hitting those sites. But here's one thing that I've focused on. In the last year, we have seen an enormous uptick of car buyers doing research on YouTube. YouTube has been powerful. It's very friendly, of course, with Google. And so the, the YouTube search results are typically favored in a Google search. So if somebody like my friend Catherine looked up Toyota Highlander, my video came up first, even though I wasn't putting money behind it, all right? It was just organically favored by Google. And we know that car buyers are watching more videos than they ever have, and that they're also influenced by what they see. A Google Automotive study said that 69% of people who watch YouTube videos as a part of their car shopping process are actually influenced by what they see. So it's a very unique opportunity for us to participate in the dialogue to help sway them towards our brand, towards our dealership, and of course to, towards working with us specifically. So I would really recommend a lot of your focus specifically on the social side, on the online side, being at YouTube for that reason. I think that's a great answer. All right, Connie, you have a follow-up question? 
Oh, we're going to ask Laura if you send it in, all right? So thank you so much for the great one, and let's move on. So next one comes in from Rick. Rick says, do you have any recommendations for a sold follow-up schedule? How many times a year? When should we phone? When should we email? Should we send a letter? And how many years would you go out? This is from Rick. Um, that, that's a heavy question. It's a really great one. So one of the things I would say is, especially to the vein of some of the things we've talked about today, you add that person on Facebook. We know that people are on Facebook. We know that they are using it. And if you did a good job of building a relationship with them, that's a friend request that they're going to accept immediately. And in that way, you are consistently in front of them forever and always. As long as you both use Facebook, there you are, and there you are developing that friend relationship. So that is my first recommendation. And typically at the time of delivery, I would let them know. Some people knew that I was very active on social and some didn't. But I would let them know that I was and then I'd be sending them a friend request. Did they have any problem with it or will they accept it? And the large majority of the time, they absolutely. In fact, sometimes they beat me to it and friended me first. So I recommend that first and foremost. And after that, I recommend touching base every 90 days, forever. Every 90 days, a quick call, a quick message in the voicemail, but every 90 days, a letter does not replace a phone call. I want you to develop a relationship with them. Again, social media is going to help you tremendously. When you call up that customer, check their Facebook first. See what they've been up to. See if they are the world's largest Eagles fan so you can congratulate Eliana on the Super Bowl win and not call her the day of the parade. <laughs> You have a little something to talk to her about, right? It doesn't have to just be, hey, how's the car? How's the family? How's the husband? You know, how's your son? Okay, you're like in the car. Okay, bye. It can be something that's a little bit more personal, again, a little bit more of a friend relationship, but it does not, I don't think anything replaces that phone call. And then, of course, I love some of the other processes, you know, sending them letters, especially on their birthday, uh, you know, their car birthday as well. That can really, mm -hmm. really be powerful. Car birthday. I love that. Um, now, we did have a follow-up question that came in from Rick. He says, but how do you keep up if you have a large database? Good problem to have, Rick. But Laura? Yeah. An amazing problem to have. You know, it's, it's definitely a challenge depending on how large your client base is. But one thing I'll tell you, Rick, and of course, I don't know your specific experience, but statistics show that the average salesperson has, get this, five and a half hours of downtime a day. Five and a half hours that you're not with customers. So doing your best to stay in front of, of your sole customer base, it's going to be a huge, a huge generator for, for revenue, for business. It's a big volume opportunity. So even if you may not have the five and a half, just do your best keeping in touch with them. Obviously, eventually, you're going to have you're going to reach some limitation, and that's a great problem to have. And that's, of course, where you can kind of bring in the heavy to see if you can't do something with an assistant or something of like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Rick, great questions. Thank you so much. Now, just so everyone knows, I know we're over time. Do yeah. you want me to stop? I don't want to stop. This is good stuff. We still have some great questions that are in the queue, and yours is probably in there. So sit tight. We're going to get to all of them, and this is being recorded. So if you have to leave, if you have to leave, leave. The link to the recording is going to be emailed to you later today, and it's going to be posted online within 24 hours over at dealeron.com. All right? But I suggest you stay because the questions are going to be awesome and the answers are going to be even better. All right, Laura, let's keep going. Next question comes in to, from Brittany. She says, is the slide deck of this presentation, aside from the recorded version, going to be made available? As I understand it, it's in the handout section. So if you have any problem getting that handout, email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. And I'll get it out to you, okay? All right, next question comes in. Oh, it's from Rick again. Okay, do you have any recommendations on what to do with service customers that do not purchase from your dealership? Ooh, I feel like that could be an entirely different webinar topic. But real quick, what would you do? I, I really struggled because I wanted to put service on here. I see as I kind of peeped at my phone, one of my friends, Grant, who does a great job, I mean, just a phenomenal job working service in Florida, was able to join us at least for the earlier portion. And I just, I struggled because I wanted to put it in. It is a huge strategy. It's a we, can, we can do another webinar topic on this, Laura. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> because it has to be worked. It has to be worked the right way. We have to use some data. You know, we have to have some friends there. We have to make sure we're approaching the right people at the right time in the right way. But I, I love the question, Rick. It's a huge opportunity. So you're going to wait until we do a webinar to answer that question? 
I mean, it's a heavy question. What I would say, Rick, is if you have the access, you look at who you would think would be good buyers. Don't only look at equity, okay? Because sometimes equity is too late. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've worked car deals where somebody's a little upside down and we've made it happen. So don't only, only look at equity, but take a look at who you have coming in and then approach them in a very comfortable, low pressure way. And you know what I would do? Rick, is I would really just let them know about the pro about our VIP or our upgrade program, or I would tell them, hey, you know, the, the vehicle that you have, it makes a great transition vehicle. And here's what I mean by this. This time of year, we have a lot of people looking for brand new Priuses that can't necessarily afford something like that brand new. Mm -hmm. So they end up looking for something like what you have, Rick, which, you know, it's a couple years older, it's got some miles on it, something they can get into a little more affordably. And our appraisers tend to pay a lot more for those types of vehicles this time of year because of the demand. Would you at least just consider selling it to us and trading it into a newer model, something like that that is very low pressure, all right? Would you at least just consider it? And that can be a really powerful way to approach your service customers once you've done your research and know that you're approaching the right people. It's a huge opportunity. I feel like we already have our next webinar topic, so I'll just write it down and keep a note, Laura. But just so you know, Rick wrote in and he's like, let's do it. So <laughs> we might have to, all right? So Rick. And everyone else, keep your eyes peeled for an upcoming webinar, again, with Laura Madison. It may or may not be on how to sell to service customers. Okay, let's see what is up next. Derek wrote in, and if you'll recall from before the webinar started, Derek wrote in from Germany. So Derek wrote in, Laura, thanks for all of the great information. I follow you and your activities since your time at Montana. Like your attitude and mindset? Let's keep it that way. So that was very nice of you, Derek. Thank you so much. All yeah. right. Uh, next question, uh, again from Rick. Rick says, do you have any suggestions on how to get every up put into the CRM? And before you answer, Laura, I feel like this is something that salespeople do not do well enough. <laughs> like, and I don't know why, the CRM is there for, for to help every salesperson keep on track and keep in touch with all of those people that cross their path. So now, answer this question for Rick. Obviously, he is having an issue with getting every up into the CRM. Do you have advice on this? I do, Rick. This is, and I want everyone to be clear, this is not a planted question. I did, I, so this is, a, this, uh, this is a shameless, though, plug for the only thing I've ever been able to see work on a sustainable and a consistent basis, and that's a managed floor. And that's using, I love the software from the next up. It's amazing, and that's the only way, Rick, that you're going to know, no kidding, how many people are coming in your showroom. I can't tell you how many of our clients I work with that get started on a system like the next up and tell me, Laura, my ups doubled. I'm getting twice as much floor traffic as I thought because my salespeople weren't logging it. You need to know your numbers, whether it's on the inbound call, whether it's on your lot ups, you need to know your before numbers so you can measure progress and improvement, and a managed floor is, the, frankly, the only way I've really ever seen that to be effective. Well, there you have it. Our friends over at the Next Up are doing a great job. And if that helps you out, Rick, I mean, I think you might see a difference with it. Give it a shot, all right? They're nice people. Oh, he wrote in. Thank you. All right, let's go. Next one comes in from Tamara, one of our winners. She says, I love the dealer on webinars, and the prizes are great, too. Thank you so much, Tamara. Legacy Toyota, Tallahassee, Florida. Well, thank you, Tamara. She is quick with the fingers. Let me tell you, this girl can type. Okay, next question comes in from Ian. Not a question. He's begging. He says, please, please, please bring management by fire to Canada. We need it. Laura, put it in your notes. <laughs> All right. No. Sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. Ian, she heard you. Okay, babe. All right. Next one comes in from Trisha. Trisha says, as the marketing manager, what is the most important thing to focus on with social media? I would say, and Trisha, is, yes. is this a, okay, perfect. Trisha, I would say that for you managing the activity of the social media for the dealership, the most important thing is still human connection. And the way that I believe you can accomplish that is by utilizing your sales force to participate in your social. I have a lot of dealerships that use salespeople videos on, on their dealer Facebook. You know, they take pictures with customers after the purchase and share it all together. That human connection is so critical because a lot of times I see dealerships Facebook pages, just a barrage of sales messages and that's it. 
and we don't have anything to really grasp onto as far as a relationship. I love just featuring more of your employees and really being able to utilize them because it's going to help their sales. And, and also pulling out of your service lane. Your advisors are some of the most familiar faces you know, to your clients. They're coming in for all changes more than they're coming in to buy cars typically. So using them as well, sharing tips, just being valuable is what I would really recommend extremely strongly. I would get comfortable if I were you walking around the dealership, snapping photos or asking, doing contests where people submit videos or yes. photos to and get that happening with frequency, that's going to be powerful for your dealership. Yeah, and I, I always, you know, I'm, I'm ex-military, and I always say, hey, stress, you know, what you're doing in the neighborhood, in the community, if you're involved in some kind of charity event, if you're just sponsoring some kind of charity, even if you're just, if your dealership is just sponsoring, you know, a little league baseball team, anything like that, you know, and, and keep it local, and, you know, if, uh, you know, if the local high school is is going to state finals or something like that, just say, hey, wishing you luck from your friends over here at our dealership. You know, I mean, it's it's easy. It's so much easier than you think. It's it funny because, yes, Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross, we were talking about always be selling, except on social media. Don't always be selling on social media, all right? But um, keep people interested and keep them aware that you are locally you know, you're interested in keeping everything local and you're very interested in the local community and you'll be just fine. All right, great question, Tricia. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one comes in from Ian, obviously our friends up north in Canada. He says, um, uh, the dealership I'm at, I'm at, we are responsible for snow removal, daily lot work, deliveries, follow-up, all kinds of stuff. And on top of that, our detail department isn't necessarily up to snuff. His question is, how can I manage my time better and sell more cars? Currently, mm -hmm. I average 17 cars per month about, but I need to allow for more family time. I'm expecting my second child in a week. Congratulations, Ian. All right, Laura, this is always important because we're always looking for that work-life balance but we also want to make more money. So uh, I'm always interested in somebody like Elise Kephart, which as you are aware, she was a rock star also when she was working at the dealership and now she's on the vendor side. And I was always impressed by the fact that, yes, she got social media working and she definitely put video to work. But she also sold over 30 cars a month and she worked Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. She never worked those crazy regular uh, you know, dealership salespeople hours. So mm -hmm. what advice can we give to Ian who, yeah, he wants to find that work-life balance. What do you got? You got any pearls? <laughs> I hope so. And congratulations again, Ian, on your second um, be, uh, being due so soon. So what I would recommend, and I get it, because I we groomed a lot of snow off the cars in Montana. I and I love I love what Eliana asked earlier about my social presence because I'm telling you, you're spending an hour a day on social, or if you rarely ever spend an hour specifically on social media, it's too much time. It's a bit, that's too much, and it's too easy to get sucked in. So what I would recommend, what worked well for me, and this is a great question also for you managers, to help your people with a game plan, you've got to have a priority list. And so what we teach at Management by Fire is a priority list of about five items. I would say hot customers first. You know, the people that need to be responded to, those should always be right at the top there. Second would be following up on these referrals that you get at the time of delivery. Third would be your sold customers and mining them. And, you know, what you can do in a day is what you can do. Your priority might look a little bit different. You might throw service back to sales on there. That might be number four, number five. You, you really have to help determine, and you managers have to help it determine a game plan for all of your salespeople. Mm -hmm. But whatever you can get to, just prioritize the most important, the most impactful types of activities that you could be engaged in. And if that's all you get to today, that should help you sell. And I also want to be really clear as well, you know, we with the training that we do, it's designed to be pack a punch and be more impactful. You know, typically, if you're more trained on how to make these calls and how to take the inbound calls and how to, again, use social media the right way, it should take less time. And you should be able to kind of get leaner and, like they say, work smarter in that way. But I would, if you don't have one, I would really recommend putting together that priority list running it by one of your managers, making sure that you're on the same page. It's going to snow where we live. 
So we'll have to do a little bit with the brooming um, and until they figure out a, a better way, until we put solar panels over the, the car lot or something like that. <laughs> Can we cover the entire car lot? <laughs> I hope that helps. <laughs> Actually, Ian already wrote in. He says, great advice. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Ian, for the wonderful question. All right, and best of luck, my friend. And by the way, the name Eliana is available if it's a girl. Okay, so next question. <laughs> I, no, seriously, I hope you have a very healthy baby. Okay, next question comes in um, from Gaylord. Gaylord says, will this webinar be archived so that we can listen to it again? Heck yeah, it is, Gaylord. I'm going to send you the link, and it's going to be posted online at dealeron.com uh, later today. Um, if you have any problems finding it, Email me at eliana at dealeron.com, and I'll make sure you get your hands on it, okay, my friend? Okay, next one comes in from Harper. He says, <laughs> he says, I'm at, uh, I'm in Stratford as well, Harper Gray Jones. I'm Ian's co-worker. He has invited, they've invited us to Canada to their dealership. <laughs> he says, um, he says, Ed is a sincere threat of a good time. So just so you know, Laura, if we're ever going to take a trip to Canada, we're visiting our friends, Harper and Ian. All right. <laughs> All right. A um, handful of questions left. Let's get to them. Next one comes in from Tanya. By the way, thank you for the invite, Harper. Um, next question is from Tanya. He, she says, do you have a Facebook page for your professional life separate from your personal, or do you just have one page only? Great question, Tanya. Laura, how do you work it? Great question. So the what we talk about, I, I train on this in social selling, but I'll try and keep the answer concise. I showed a slide earlier about some of the decisions Zuckerberg has made about the algorithm, and I always promise my team that when I do these presentations or speak with any group that I'm not going to talk too much about the algorithm, they say that everybody's eyes glaze over, but I can't see you guys. So I'll at least tell you, again, Zuckerberg, he's not liking it, and he's a lot smarter than I am. He knows that people don't want to get bombarded with sales messages like Eliana was talking about earlier. So I think it is of critical importance that you have a personal page that's dedicated to your person, your human, you know, you as a person, but as a salesperson at the dealership, okay, or as a manager at the dealership. So what that might look like, you kind of have two options. You can make a personal page that is just your personal page and just keep it squeaky clean, keep it polished, keep it professional. That's what I do. I have always had just one personal page, Laura Madison, you can go, you can friend me, and you'll be able to see that I did not share a single opinion about the last election or any divisive topic because I know it might turn people off and I'm using social media as a sales tool. If you're one of those people that wants to share their opinions about what's happening politically or in the you know, current events, then make that page private make it just your friends, your family, the, those who are closest to you, and create a second personal page that is accessible and public to your customers where you can connect with them and still upload the things that make you human. Still upload pictures of your kids if you're comfortable or activities or your pets and really make sure that you have that human connection there. But at this time, I do not recommend setting up a business page that's Laura at Eliana Motors, that, you know, Facebook. That is just that's not a good formula based on what Zuckerberg is telling us and based on what we know about the algorithm as it exists. Thank you so much. Great answer. And Tanya, great question. I know you are not the only one who was thinking that, so I appreciate that. Um, okay, let's move on. We do have uh, still a handful of questions left, so here we go. Let's power through. Next question comes in from Mark. This is an interesting one. He says, are there different strategies? And I assume he means social strategies, but maybe I'm mistaken. He says, are there different strategies for staying in touch with millennials versus baby boomers? <laughs> What do you got, Laura? Do you treat people differently because of their age? Are you an ageist? <laughs> you know, I'm not. I think that all generations like to text. We've seen that. So as long as you're in compliance, I really encourage texting, keeping in touch with people. And then I was actually having a discussion with my boyfriend's father about this last week. You know, years ago, we heard millennials. They don't want to be on the phones. They just, they just want to email. They just want to send in the internet leads. You guys remember hearing this? Here's what I do as a millennial. I will call Target to see if they have the specific item before I drive my butt down there. I, a phone call, especially with mobile devices and the optimi optimization of click-to-call, which DealerOn can tell you so much more about, 
See, with that optimization, people, especially millennials, are going back to the phone. So while we heard years ago that there might be a distinction there, and we might be talking to baby boomers, but only texting with millennials, I'm just not seeing it consistently. You have to make the best decision for your client base. But I would say just try everything out and make sure you don't make any kind of you know preconceived or any any judgments uh, but, you know that don't have kind of the fact, the experience to back them up. Okay, so no difference. Okay, so Mark has a follow-up. He's like, and for that matter, staying in touch with business versus fleet customers. You treat them differently? I don't think so. Humans are humans. <laughs> well, I mean, if that could be the tagline. All right, Mark, thank you so much for the great question. We really appreciate it. If you have a follow-up, you've got a few more minutes to get it in. All right. Connie, I don't know if you recall, but you answered Connie's question a little bit earlier. So Connie had a response. She says, wow, great response, Laura. FYI, I bought my Mazda 3 hatchback in November and used TrueCar as a shopping tool and also did watch a YouTube video drive demonstration of the 2.5 Touring model that I intended to buy. So truth right? And she's in the car business, so it's no different, right? She says, FYI, I am a huge Eagles fan, the year of the underdog, dilly dilly, Philly Philly, Connie, I love you. <laughs> nope, not over it, not going to be over it, going to ride this train for all it's worth. So Connie, thank you so much for the great, I mean, honestly, that was the best one yet all day, um, comment. <laughs> okay, last two questions, here we go. Janelle has a question. She says, when posting and tagging on Facebook, do you suggest a professional page versus personal? So I think we already covered that, right? But yeah. I, what I don't think I heard was, what did you do? I know you said you gave your advice on, on what to do, but did you personally, did you have Lara Drives and then you had something else or you just did Lara Drives? Well, so I did have, and I still do have a Laura Drives page, but in the, you know, uh, respect of being completely transparent, you'll be able to see my activity on there is very low because the algorithm. Well, you're not selling cars anymore, but yeah. Well, yeah, and, and the, yeah, but the algorithm, it doesn't like the business pages, just Zuckerberg is not showing it to as many people. So you work your butt off to get all those likes and then it's shown to like 0.01% yeah. of your audience. Organically, it's too much of a bummer. So, although I do have a Laura Drives page, I'll tell you, I hardly ever used it. The one that got me the results, even when I was selling cars, it was my personal, it was my Laura Madison Facebook page that people could go on and friend me and we could stay in touch that way. Well, there you have it. All right, Janelle, thank you so much for that question. All right, last one comes in from Michael. And, Michael, I know you're still on, so I'm curious. Uh, what question this was to, and I'm sorry I didn't pay attention to it, my screen was pretty full with questions. But Michael says, does his CRM have an app so that he can put it through his phone, don't wait until you're back in the store? Oh, and he says that was in response to Rick's question. About the showroom visits? I think it was, about how to, um, to make sure that all your ups were in the CRM. And that's one thing, I don't know necessarily that that was the, the question that was trying to get answered, but I, I want to be clear too, software like ne what Next Up has, they have mobile apps, everything is trackable. So you can see everybody, it's a great, great system so that you really can see, no kidding, there's no hiding in there, you can see everything that's going <laughs> No hiding at all? Can't go outside for a smoke? No? All right, Michael, thank you so much for asking that, we do appreciate it. I think, I think that was our last question, Laura. Nailed it like a pro. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, uh, any last minute words of advice? Anything else that maybe you forgot to say, although I can't imagine there is, before we say goodbye to the audience? You know, the last thing I just want to say again is about taking action with what you learned and really putting it into practice so that you can get more traffic, whether it's with your team or with yourselves individually. It's really important that you now do something with what you've learned here. Thank you so much. Laura, that was a freaking fantastic presentation. You see what I did there? All right, thank you so much. And yes, we will be having you back on the show soon to talk about how to sell to service customers, I'm sure. I will talk to you later offline about picking a date for that. Very excited about it. Of course, I'm going to remind the audience, a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. 
make sure you share it with your friends and colleagues. It was amazing. And yes, we're going to be posting it online at dealeron.com slash webinar. And from there, you not only can see past webinars, but you can also sign up and register for some of our future webinars as well. And by the way, Laura Madison is going to be presenting at the upcoming Innovative Dealer Summit April 3rd and 4th and the Digital Dealer Convention in Orlando April 10th and 12th. Are you going to be there? Are you thinking about being there? Well, let me tell you, links are on the page to find out more information. And if you are, check her out. She is amazing in person. Her presentations are always spot on, and they are a definite good use of your time. So I hope you check her out. She is awesome. You're definitely not going to want to miss it, all right? Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. Dude, I thought it was fabulous, but no one cares what I think. We only care what you think. So fill out this questionnaire. It is three short questions. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. Give me your honest feedback. That's all I ever ask from you, my friends, okay? And... If you're losing valuable traffic on a slow mobile site, well, that's no good. It's estimated that well over half your website traffic is coming from mobile devices. Don't worry. Dealeron's here to the rescue. We're going to offer you a free mobile site speed test. You can get yours by filling out that questionnaire after the webinar. All you have to do is give us your URL and let the magic begin. It's a great way to see how your website speed stacks up to the competition. And Dealeron is going to be exhibiting and presenting at the upcoming NADA convention in Vegas at the end of March. You planning on going? I'm planning on being there. I'm going to be at booth 3493 Charlie. We have an open bar, people. Just come by and have a Bloody Mary with me. Anyway, best booth around, music, liquor, and great innovative things to see when it comes to dealership websites. We're also bringing you some goods from two of our experts at DealerOn. First, our SEO master, I, I was going to call him master of disaster, but let's not. SEO master Greg Gifford is going to be talking about the Lego Masters Builder's Guide to Local SEO for Car Dealers. When he speaks, you better listen. No one is more well-versed on automotive SEO, no, scratch that, on just SEO than Greg Gifford. He is one of the greatest in the entire nation. So you definitely want to hear that. We also have Michael DeVito talking. He's our chief creative officer here at DealerOn. He's going to be talking about selling more cars with your mobile website strategy in Pave the Path to Purchase and how to turn your website traffic into sales. Phenomenal presentations. We're looking forward to seeing you at NADA. And if you get a demo at DealerOn's booth at NADA, you can also score yourself 100 bucks. Not too bad while you're in Vegas. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar. Whew, it's going to be a good one. Using your data to increase traffic and conversions now. We were just talking about how to increase your conversions. Well, wait. Can you really do that? Is it really possible to do that? Well, CEO of Reunion Marketing, Dave Spanicky, says, heck yeah, you can use your data to increase traffic and conversions now. Furthermore, it's something that every dealership should be doing and that every dealership is capable of doing immediately. Right now, the information exists inside and outside your website. It all has untapped potential. Your data has the power to drive consumers to your site by ensuring your authority and stimulating interest in the right channels. Your data can also compel website visitors to perform a shopping behavior with the right pages containing the best message placement, and calls to action. In this eye-opening one-hour webinar, Dave will show attendees how to leverage proven concepts that drive car shoppers to your site and then how to best convert them. Dave will be getting very strategic about creating a plan for your website founded in established tactics and industry-wide information to net you the greatest increase in shoppers. If you're ready to learn insights about how to use the abundance of data at your fingertips to best identify current opportunities to win, well, don't you dare miss this hour of automotive awesomeness, so register now. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding the DealerOn webinar series and our topics, well, shoot, I'd love to hear from you. Um, everywhere, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, you name it. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. I would love to hear from you. For right now, I'm going to thank you all so very much for your time today. And I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care, everyone.
<laughs> sell, sell, sell. 